What's going on, y'all? KM Best here, and I have an 80% win rate in and around top 100 with this deck. Yep, that's right. Basic destroy, and yep, that's right. 80% win rate. And this is not like, oh, 80% win rate. Oh, he played eight games and he won like seven of them. No, this is over 40 plus games with destroy. I think this deck might very well be one of the absolute best in the game, and I can't think of another time that I have had a streak of this magnitude. I even played this deck on the featured location day that should have benefited Destroy and had a worse record on the featured location day than I did off the featured location day. This is a deck that has been absolutely crushing for me. I know that is not always something that translates into success for others, but I think right now this deck is incredibly well positioned, so let's dive into why. The major thing this deck does very well is go very tall with very good nut draws. Now, when I say nut draws, I mean, you know, when you have a Deadpool in your opener and some things to blow it up, when you have an X-23 in your opener, some things to blow it up, and those kind of games are typified by usually playing something that has about 20-something power on the final turn of the game, maybe even bigger, and because of that, you have multiple ways to get there. With the X-23 lines, you can get there with, you know, X-23 into Null Death type things. With Deadpool lines, you can get there with, you know, Deadpool into Hulkbuster into Boom 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 24 Power Deadpool plus a Null, that type of thing you can do as well. You end up getting very large Venoms when you have those lines as well. And the major thing that makes this deck good for me is the ability to go extremely tall, which is good against a lot of stuff right now. You know, Phoenix Force is relatively capped on power. Thanos is able to go very tall, but it's not able to go like obscenely tall. You can typically get, you know, a null taller than a Thanos. You have your death that's bigger than the Mockingbird, things of that nature. You also have Killmonger into that matchup, which is pretty good. And of course, we have a Shang-Chi in the deck, which is also pretty good in that matchup when they play out some big guy early. That pumps our null pretty significantly. Now, the major thing that this deck really has going for it is that of the top, I would say, four decks, and I guess you can go five if you want to say War Machine stuff is something you have to prepare for because a lot of people are playing it. So of those decks, this is the one that goes the absolute tallest, and with the ability to include Shang-Chi and Killmonger, it also has some built-in interaction against anything that is approaching it in terms of size. Deadpool is one of the absolute best cards in the game to have in your opening hand, especially when you have something like a Hulkbuster or a Nico Minoru to make it even stronger. Nico Minoru drawing two cards off a of Deadpool is completely busted. Hulkbuster on a Deadpool into stuff getting blown up gives you turn three, eight power Deadpool, and he only gets bigger from there. Those are the games where he typically goes to 16 or 32 and gets you to extremely prohibitively large numbers. When Deadpool gets to those numbers, you are generally going to win the game just in terms of you're putting a ton of points on the board and people aren't really interacting with you in a meaningful way, at least right now. This gives this deck an inbuilt advantage because you have these hands. You can see what your hand is capable of very early, which gives you some very solid snap equity and Deadpool is a big part of that. Nico Minoru is a key part of a lot of the nut draws in this deck. Obviously, her best option here is destroy a card and draw two, and I consider that option so strong that I will often take it even if I'm not getting value out of the destroy part of it. I have blown up Hulkbusters, for example, just to get deeper into the deck and start drawing cards. The way that game plan tends to work is once you've committed to that, if you get the draw two, it's like, all right, you know, it's not going to be on something good, but that's fine. If you don't have the Deadpool in hand, you typically don't start building for the Deadpool, but you're drawing to get to X-23 so you can become a deck that uses X-23 to accelerate out Null and Death and win that way. One of the typical lines that you end up taking is you end up with a turn 5 Null and then a turn 6 Death plus Shang-Chi, which A, pumps the Null as long as you have a valid Shang-Chi target, and B, also involves playing a 12 power dude alongside that Shang. Nico can accelerate you towards that. Now, one of her abilities that gets a lot worse in this deck is the Demon, because you are a Killmonger deck and you don't really have a lot of good targets for it. You are very rarely actually choosing to turn things into a Demon when you play this card. You can also use her as a basic budget forge, so pumping a Deadpool up to three is something that's totally valid. If you have enough stuff in your hand to make you want to start snowballing that Deadpool, that is totally acceptable as well. 
and of course to copy a giant venom late in the game there are going to be turn fives where your turn five is something like you know deadpool nico for the copy venom that lane you get like a very large venom he ends up like you know a 311 a 317 something of that nature and that's just a really easy way to win games just on pure numbers is having 317s perhaps the most underrated card in the deck x23 is key to the games where you don't draw deadpool because she allows you to have this null death centric game plan and get those cards up to solid levels of power x23 is probably i would say not better than deadpool in your opening hand but like legitimately close to the point that this card is and should be discussed as the powerhouse that it is uh obviously excellent with nico draw two duh you are fine putting a hulkbuster on her and just having her go everywhere because that gives you a lot more power on the null stuff like that is totally acceptable you can get her into lanes that you otherwise are unable to access it just a generally very excellent card the major thing you need to worry about with her especially when you have her and wolverine on the field is am i going to clog myself somehow and you know that is an issue you have to deal with but she is by far worth it carnage has the superpower of costing two and being able to easily fit him in to what you are trying to do is a very powerful ability to have this is an easier card to fit into your curve than the other destroy cards and that is really the upside that he has yeah he's also pretty good when like your opponent is clogging your stuff one thing that you should note is that against decks that are playing goblins you are going to want to prioritize playing venom earlier than normal compared to carnage typically a lot of the time you want to play Venom last of your destroy cards, but Carnage and Deathlock get more value when your opponent is playing Goblins because you're going to likely need to use them to blow their stuff up, and Venom gets actually negative power from that, and Carnage and Deathlock do not. Wolverine is the worst of your cards that benefit when they get blown up, but he is still good enough to enable you to sort of limp into these games where it's like, yeah, you can play Wolverine decks. Like, you can play this as a Wolverine deck. You, like, maybe you Hulkbuster him. You get him to, like, 10. You blow him up a couple times. Your Null is going to be pretty big. The Venom you use to eat Wolverine is going to be pretty big. It's your third best game plan when it comes to, like, stuff you actually want to blow up. Both Deadpool and X-23 are significantly higher. But just the numbers on it tend to be actually pretty okay. Because when you are blowing up Wolverine, you usually haven't drawn Deadpool or X-23, which means your hand is like Wolverine, Hulkbuster, payoffs, and things that eat Wolverine. And that is a game plan you can have. And that being like your, oh, I didn't draw any of the stuff I really want kind of plan is better than most decks when they're in that situation. Hulkbuster is, I think, very much a flex with Forge here. It is a lot harder to use Hulkbuster than Forge, but Hulkbustering a Deadpool is a lot better than forging a Deadpool. I think it's probably 50-50, honestly. I like Hulkbuster because I like having that extreme extra power spike, that one power that you get extra over Forge. Really does end up mattering the more you blow the Deadpool up. Like, it does really come into play. Like, starting with a 1-4 Deadpool is a lot better than starting with a 1-3 Deadpool because you go to 8 instead of 6, you go to 16 instead of 12. Like, it really starts stacking up the more you destroy that Deadpool. And I typically like this deck to be able to go as tall as possible, especially now that I'm not playing Arnim Zola. I need to make up that power in other places. Uh, I wouldn't be, like, offended if you swap this out for Forge, though. Killmonger is, A, a very good card against Thanos decks because a lot of them tend to, like, oh, I'm going to hold this Mockingbird till the turn that it matters and you can blow it up. Uh, blow up all their stones before they can get that Mockingbird discount. It's also just good against Thanos decks because they kind of do rely a little bit on the power of, you know, to some extent, uh, the Power Stone, but also Soul Stone. And blowing those up is actually kind of relevant. You can put yourself in a situation where that is very good for you, of course, when you have your death. By the same token, you do have to be cautious of, like, Mobius in Thanos decks. You have to be cautious of Mobius in various places. You often end up wanting to play your death and just being like, all right, I got to get it out of there. That's fine, right? I think that this is a card that is a large part of this deck's competitive advantage right now. Just being able to, like, free roll this card, having this card work with your game plan, be something you would play, even if it did not necessarily blow up your opponent's cards, is very good and the fact that you get to just free roll blowing up like five stones and playing a free death is extremely powerful 
by and large the best destroy card venom has actually taken a minor hit with the proliferation of decks that are playing things like hobgoblin green goblin people trying cannonball stuff people doing a bunch of weird junk stuff right now venom is still very good obviously you want to like stack up your deadpool then eat the venom or eat the deadpool with the venom that is like typically how it goes and he still is probably the best but there is actually some consideration towards like all right do i want to use the venom early because like they're gonna goblin my stuff i'd rather death lock the goblins and things like that like that does come up and venom is actually notably bad into stuff like that into like century annihilus you want to have the other boom booms in those situations Deathlock is pretty specifically the worst of the Boom Booms. He has all the downside of Venom, except, you know, the Goblin stuff. Uh, the downside, of course, being that he costs three instead of two. And none of the upside of Venom or even of Carnage, he just is a 3-5. And you play him because I think you have to right now. You're more invested in just, like, pulling off your nut draw as much as you possibly can. And whether or not, you know... We love it. Deathlock does do a decent approximation of Venom or Carnage if you have to. You really want as many ways to blow up your Deadpool, ways to blow up your X-23 as you possibly can get. And so that means you are priced into running this guy. He's not someone you're overly happy about running, and I think most of your best draws do not involve him, but you still need him in the deck because he increases the range of good draws that you have. I got nothing. I don't know. Like, no one plays around this card. No one plays around it. Nobody plays around Shang-Chi right now in this deck. And maybe they will after I make this video. I was like, okay, no one plays around Shang-Chi. I'll throw it on the tier list. And then after I put it on the tier list, this deck kept winning. And people still kept not playing around Shang-Chi. And it's just like, holy crap, this card is so good. The ultimate Shang-Chi is the one your opponent is not expecting. And right now, people aren't expecting this. And you can just absolutely ruin people's lives with this card. Having the ability to, like, go for a turn 5 null off of blowing up an X-23 into a turn 6 Shang-Chi death is Thanos-esque. Like, that is a Thanos-ass kind of play. Like, that is really good. And that is absolutely a thing you can do. You can use it to blow whatever you want up uh, if they're playing stuff out early. But like, yeah, generally that is the thing you're looking to do. And you can accomplish this with like shocking regularity because some of the time Nico's just drawing you two cards, which means you're seeing 11 cards a game. And you just end up in these spots where it's just like, I don't even know how it's possible to lose when you have all this stuff. You have the Shang-Chi, it's like the best card in the game. You have a free death, that's bigger than a Mockingbird. You have a gigantic Null, that's obviously gigantic. You have seven energy, you have a Deadpool to go along with the Null. Like there's just, there are some games that just seem actually impossible to lose when you have this card in your deck. Null is extremely large and extremely in charge. A lot of his utility though is dictated by X-23. When you are just playing a Null on 6, that tends to be a little bit awkward. But when you are able to play a Null plus a Deadpool on 6, that tends to be borderline unlosable. And when you are able to play a Null plus a Deadpool and a Death, that tends to be even more borderline unlosable. And that is typically how Null plays. He's like a big guy that says, oh, I'm going to win this lane. And if you can set up situations where you can play multiple big guys that say, oh, I'm going to win this lane... Typically, you end up winning two lanes, and that is generally how you win the game Marvel Snap. Being a 0-12 is not always in the cards for death, which is why we talk a lot about, like, all right, let's get the null out early using an X-23 and then have death cost, like, two, and you play that alongside a Shang. Things of that nature end up happening a lot. She's not always going to be that cheap. I think she ends up getting that cheap mostly in matchups where your opponent is playing one drops that a Killmonger can kill off. It typically doesn't happen all the time. She usually ends up in the two to three range. Typically what I aim for is being able to play her alongside a Shang on the final turn of the game. Whether that means, you know, okay, I get, you know, death at three, but I played an X-23 that I blew up on turn five, so I have seven energy, things like that. Like that, you kind of do have to think that out and be like, all right, what am I actually going for here? And that is generally my aim with death. Obviously, sometimes you get like, you know, you have seven energy, you play null, Deadpool, and death, and it's just like impossible to lose. But most of the time your opponent's leaving when you do that. So it's like, you know, whatever, right? So a lot of the times when she's actually winning me games is when she costs like three and I pair her with a Shang after an X-23 on the final turn of the game. That kind of stuff is like much more reasonable for your opponent to stay in. 
and much harder for them to beat because they just don't exactly know what your range is there. It's a little bit awkward to keep track of, uh, you know, the, the total energy you have, all that stuff. What's death actually at? Do I have to play around this? How can I play around this without, you know, giving up my ability to play around any of the other options? It tends to be a pretty powerful card in this deck. All right, y'all. I hope that you have the same success with this deck that I had because, like, oh my god, this is like the the best a deck has done for me in an extremely long time. This is some crazy stuff. Like, I actually feel weird making this video because it's like so not what I typically do. What I typically do is be like, all right, so this is a deck that's like pretty good. Here's how you play it. For me, it's like like I, you don't have eighty percent win rates over forty games. It's just not a thing you have. Like, it's just not normal. And uh, this is extremely, I would say, an outlier performance. So, like, this deck is actually just crushing right now. I hope it does as well for you as it has for me. We're going to jump into some gameplay. And uh, for the record, every single one of the games that I've played that I, like, show in that untapped thing, they have all been on stream. So you will be able to watch all of them if you want to go check out my VODs over there on Twitch. But also, we're going to put some great gameplay right here for you. But mostly, it's just, let's see how this works. America Chavez. Yeah, Elias, Shang, Lady Deathstrike. It could be a bunch of shit. All right, I actually have enough stuff that I don't think I need to Nico draw to here. I just got a lot of shit. Horrifying. But I have the, uh... Nico, what's her face, still in the can. The one that gets rid of uh, locations. I think I gotta do it like that. I'll try. I will certainly try. Wow. That's scary. Now I'm scared of, like, Eliath or something. No one plays around a Shang here, though, right? That's not real. Do you like the OTA? It sort of depends on how fucked up, uh... What's-his-face gets. We're dead to Eliath, yeah. I believe that. 
But like, if you drew a Silver Surfer, you're thinking, I can win that null lane, right? You're playing Patriot Surfer here, yeah? And so because of that, we end up winning because the Eliath, the, we pump the null, right? Like, this is the play every time. Hulkbuster? It wouldn't have mattered. Like, sure, I could have played it. I have decided to make your drop slower. What are you? Yeah, okay. I'll take a second kill longer. I don't hate that. I do kind of hate that. Good, good, good. I'm into this. I'm into this. Max Skellington is redeemed. Is he cooking? All right, Max Skellington, are you cooking? Tell me, sir. Copy that wrong, shoot me dead. That's not what are you cooking is for, sir. Sir, that is not what are you cooking is for. Are you cooking is where you tell a joke. That is not even remotely what this is for. I'm a little scared. No! Oh god. Oh god. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, maybe. Yo, thank you, Reno. Welcome back. Okay, maybe yes. And by maybe yes, I mean we at least get a Wolverine in there. Maybe. But I think we die to, like, null death here pretty horribly. I think we die to null death here pretty horribly, and that seems like the logical thing to do if you're them. Boy, that, that sure looks like not null death. Let's Let's find out. No! Okay. No! Come on! We win the tiebreaker? Jesus Christ, that was a lot. I forgot about that name war buff for just a second. This deck is working better than I expected. It's usually pretty good early. This is an ass hand, though. 
Okay, if they're Phoenix and I draw a Killmonger, it's kind of okay. Yeah? One card? Oh, that's horrifying. Sure. Getting fucking... Getting fucking shit on. I get it. All right. I guess the Null kind of immunizes me from that, at least on that lane. Am I wrong? Like, the Null kind of just makes it fine, right? Hey, oh, thanks for the stats, buddy. Thanks for the stats, buddy. I love that for me. Ooh, this hand's booty ass. The bootiest assist. I should have should have quit while I was ahead, chat. I should have quit while I was ahead. That's it. There's like three really good draws here, but there's like eight cards in the deck. So we're like 37.5%. You feel me? I'm not feeling great about this draw, but if we draw one of those cards, Deadpool, X-23, Wolverine, we're in an amazing spot. Or maybe not amazing, but, like, pretty good. They are Black Knight, which means I might be able to scam them with El Shanger. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I have a thought. I don't want to necessarily speak it into existence, but this lets me blow up the Black Knight with a Killmonger. No fucking Ebony Blade for you today. None of it. Zero. And now if I draw Deadpool or X-23, I think I'm in a great spot. Specifically X-23, I think, is the card I want. No fucking Black Knight for you, sir. Wow. How the fuck do I even get in there? I don't know. Corvus Glaive, card Infinite She-Hulk. That's not good. That's not good at all. If I had to guess, I would say I was dead here. X-23, one turn late. I'm Oh. 
Well, I mean, in that case, I will actually keep doing this then. I don't know that I would call this easy, though. Okay, it was easy. Infinite going there means we win. Was some guy in chat asking who the F plays C5? I don't know, probably. Hello, Hulkbuster. Fuck me. That sucks. Fuck off. Oi. I'll say oi to that one. Boy, that's a lot of cards. I hope that dies too. Ah, uh, I guess. Can you see if my sub was renewed for you? Yes, it was. All right, come on, Venom. I need you to die. Because otherwise, we're dead. Venom's got to die with this danger room. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Between where we're at on stream and where we're at on YouTube. Ah, oh, this hand sucks. Never mind, this hand rocks. This hand is instantly goaded. They flew over my head. Nothing flies over my head.
Nice. Horrifying. Probably going to die. But I'll stick in it. This hand is so good that it's like... Yeah, okay. He could be bluffing. If he ends up being a Mr. Negative deck, I feel pretty dumb about making this call. And it's entirely possible he is a Mr. Negative deck. But I have some large as fuck guys here, so I will I will stay in it here. That's cute. I love what's going on here. I'm probably going to die. I definitely feel like I'm going to die here. Yeah. Feel like I'm dead. I believe this is Phoenix Force, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it turns out, it turns out staying in it worked out for us. We were dead to like a lieth there. Leave chat, please. I know you're in here, lost son. I already don't like that you know what I'm playing, but I guess there's nothing I can do about that. Oh, this hand seems unplayable. This hand seems unplayable. Gross. Oh, boy. Uh, I could get... Uh... Deadpool right now or X-23 right now. Okay, that is semi-palatable. Are you? Okay.
Well, that's good for me. What the fuck is happening, though? Are we getting, like, Shang Annihilist or some heinous bullshit? Pixie. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Hey, it feels a lot better playing a real deck. It does not seem like that's a good thing. Yo, we're about to go go insane on this Hulkbuster, right? We can also go insane on this Venom. No! What the fuck? Wait, never mind. That rocks. This is actually fine. We got away with it somehow. Wait, I died. I died a Doctor Doom here, right? Oh shit, I, I lived. Oh shit. <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't play around Doom there. <laughs> 